Hey what's up everyone, I'm Andrew and in this video I'm gonna restore and mod the PlayStation 4 Slim. This PlayStation 4 Slim was brought to me in a verge condition and with a few small issues. The first noticeable thing is the dirt over the case, but generally the case is in a good shape. The main issues on this PS4 Slim are This PS4 is switching off if I try to move while it's turned on but sometimes it's switching off randomly, without any movement. But while I mess around with this PS4, I found why this is happening. At first, I think that this problem is coming from the power supply, but it is not. This problem was caused by a bad power cable. In the upper part, the cable is a bit damaged. This actually could be a very serious if the cable causes a short circuit. But for luck, none of that happens. I replace the power cable and after that everything backs into a normal. Also, while I do the basic tests, I notice that the temperatures are a bit higher than the normal. And the DualShock controller doesn't work properly. The buttons X and circle and the down and the left arrow to the D-pad are not working always. And to get these buttons working, I need to press very hard. And definitely, this is not comfortable while gaming. Well, let's start, back this PS4 Slim in a normal again and do some changes. And first, I will start with a full teardown. Also in this video, I will show the steps on how I open this PS4 Slim. In case, if you have some PS4 Slim that you want to clean, change thermal paste, mod or do something with it. Well. First, I start with removing the warranty sticker from the back side. And if the PS4 is under warranty, removing the sticker will void the warranty. But in this case, the warranty is already expired. Now, using a Phillips screwdriver, I will remove the screw that is under the warranty sticker. Well, now I will pull and remove the hard disk cover plastic. Under this plastic cover, there is a one more Phillips screw that is holding the hard disk. Ok, now I will remove the hard disk by pulling it out. Now is coming the hardest part, opening the case. So here I will start from the bottom side. And here I need to pull the case in the corner where the hard disk is. Now, I will push the case to my left side because to release the plastic pin in the left corner in the case. And then I will pull the case a little bit up and then slide down. Well, now let's remove the top case. To remove the top case, I will start from my left side or where the PS4 letters are. First, I will pull up this side and then I will pull up the right side. Well, and basically this is it. Now first, I will start with removing the PS4 power supply. So here we have a two Torx screws with size T8 and three Phillips screws. Also, before I remove the power supply, I need to remove the Wi-Fi antenna. Now, I will pull up the power supply carefully and disconnect the cable from the bottom side. Well, now let's move to the back side. Here first, I will disconnect the Wi-Fi antenna and the other flex cable from the PS4 motherboard. Well, after I disconnect all the cables, I will remove all the screws from the bottom side and one Tor screw from the front side. Mm -hmm. 
Now carefully, I will remove the metal plate over the PS4 motherboard. Now I will remove the both large Phillips screws and the metal holder. And to disconnect this power cable from the motherboard, I will use a needle nose pliers. Well, now the PS4 motherboard is released and I can remove it from the case. Well, we're not done yet. Now I will continue with removing the Wi-Fi antenna, the power button, the other metal plate, the cooling fan and the CD-ROM. Basically, this is it. This PS4 Slim is much cleaner than I expected, except that the thermal paste is dry and it's like a stone. So probably this PS4 was placed in some tiny space with a bad airflow. Well, after I separate all the parts, let's move to the cleaning process. So first, I will start with cleaning the motherboard. First, I will remove the cooling rubber pads and then I will move to cleaning the old thermal paste. Also, to clean the motherboard and the thermal paste, I will use a 96% isopropyl alcohol, cotton buds and soft brushes. Well, I'm done with the motherboard. And now I will move to cleaning the other components. Also here I used dry cleaning using a brushes. Well, and these are all the parts after cleaning. After I finish with dry cleaning, I move to cleaning the case. The case actually wash it using soap and water. I have done this because this is the only way to clean the case in detail and because of the upcoming mod. Now, after I finish with cleaning the inside parts and the case, I move to the DualShock controller. Now I will fully disassemble the controller, because I need to check it from the inside, clean it and try to back it in a function again, I mean to check the buttons that are not working properly. Well, and the controller looks pretty fine from the inside. It has some dust and trace of liquid, but nothing too serious. Well, 
Now I'm going to clean the internal components and wire the controller case with the buttons. Well, now the controller is perfectly clean. And before I assemble the controller, using a pen I will cross over the controller's contacts. I have done this because the contacts are a little bit damaged and the graphite from the pen is great conductive material. So this will renew the contacts and will help in fixing the buttons. Well, and the DualShock controller is done, and it's almost like a brand new. Now let's move to the PS4 case. Before I assemble the PS4, I will do a case mod. And in this video I will use more sprays than usual, because the case mod it will be in fire and lava or volcano style. But first I start with preparing the case. I mean taping the case using a paper tape and removing the metal plate from the mid case. After I finish with preparing process, it's time to paint the case. Here I'm gonna be short because this was a pretty long process, but I'm gonna show all the steps. So first I start with applying plastic primer over the entire case. After I apply the plastic primer, I start with the first color, the red-orange spray. And with this spray I paint the entire case, the bottom case the mid case and the top case. After the red orange gets fully dry, I move to the pure white spray. With a pure white spray over the entire case, I create small dots and drops. After the pure white spray gets dry, I took the apricot spray and with this spray also create small drops and dots. After the apricot dots and drops gets dry, I move to the next taping process. But for this process I need a very thin paper tape, 
which I don't have. I only have a thicker one. So in this case, I stick the thicker paper on the cutting pod. And then, using a scalper, I create thinner pieces that will do the job in this mod. Now using a thinner tape, I start with creating different shapes in crust style over the top and the bottom case. After I finish with creating these random cross style shapes, I move to the next painting process. And here I used a fire red spray. Now I had to create some cool and dark points. So first I took a pure black spray. And with this spray I create dots and drops over the top and the bottom case. And as final paint I used a transparent black spray. These transparent sprays are used to create shadows or change a shade to some color. And in this case I used this spray to create a shadows around the edges of the case and between the crusts. Well, now let's remove the paper tape and move to the final step. The final step is painting the PS4 logo. So here I get across over one more taping process and preparing for painting the logo. Actually, I had a big doubt in which color to be the logo. But after all, I've decided to paint the logo in some metal style. And for this, I used a steel or silver spray. I have done this because I want to separate the logo from the painting. But also, the steel paint is nicely fitting with the fire design. After everything is done and the painting is complete, now I will move to preparing the case for assembling. And first I need to back the metal plate to the mid case. But because I removed the plastic holders that are holding this metal plate, now somehow I need to stick this part. And to stick this part I will use a quality super glue gel. After the glue was completely dry, I did some checks to be sure that this metal plate is well stick to the case. Well, and now it's time to fully assemble this PS4 Slim.
And finally, after making all these changes, this is the final result. Now, after I finish with everything, I move to detail testing. I check the temperatures, I check the functionality of the PS4 and the DualShock controller. And everything is working perfectly fine. And as final thing, as always, I will test some games. Also, I connect the PS4 to my 34-inch ultra-wide monitor, because I wanna see and show to you how the gaming goes in widescreen, under 21.9 aspect ratio. Well, and this is all about this PS4 Slim. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to clean, restore, back in function or mod some touch. Also, if you want to support me to grow this channel, you can press the subscribe button. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.